Life is full of irony. And according to my doctor, I need more iron in my diet. So iodized salt is on the shopping list. As soon as I feel like it later today or tomorrow, whatever, I'll postpone if I feel like it. But ironic enough, there's pain you deal with in life and there's pain literally that goes in your ass as far as what the doctor told me because of all things I got detected with my first ever and I'm not proud of this first ever, but it's there. Obviously, it's, it's present right now. A hemorrhoid. I had to go to the gastroenterologist. I would strongly advise to do so. You know, even though I'm not 40 yet and I'm not supposed to get the colonoscopy do, uh, business, whatever. I was advised to do so because my gas is, you know, uh, particularly offensive to who I share my life with. And then of all things, she said, listen, you got to go to the doctor. I'm not telling you you have to, but I suggest you do. And then you know how girlfriends are or, you know, significant others can be. They start like nagging, 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 getting at you and insisting you do things, you know, by conveniently bringing it up in conversation whenever they can. It's like, all right, I get the hint. I'll go, for God's sakes. I go. Oddly enough, too, this is the ironic thing. This is the, oh, shout out to uh, Xander. Oh, God, I'm going to mess that name up. Xander from the Xander and Stone podcast about supernatural stuff and, you know, things out there and um, alien probing and all that. You know, I, I don't know exactly where aliens probe besides your ass or your brain, not you, Xander, but I mean in general. But it's something they're choosing, I guess. Whatever they have access to with the big mushroom tip fingers, I guess. Speaking of mushroom tip fingers, the doctor had to check and make sure he confirmed no cancer, no funny business. It's just a straight up hemorrhoid. Someone's been sitting on the toilet too long for no good reason but to check Instagram and or make some notes for upcoming movies and shit. So I was like, all right, doc, you got me. I've been guilty of that and the hemorrhoids cause of that. Sitting too long on the toilet. I thought it would never be a bad thing because that's where I get a lot of my business done, you know, uh, physically and literally, of course, you know, on the phone and such. I make my notes, you know, I check emails and such. Turns out my legs turning numb the pins and needles after sitting too long wasn't the only bad thing or side effect. Hemorrhoids are caused by sitting too long on the toilet. Now, that's what a doctor told me. I'm not spreading misinformation. I'm not trying to tell you to go to the doctor for no good reason other than, you know, if you're sitting too long like I do, and then all of a sudden the magical little bump shows up on your ass the week of when you schedule with the doctor of all things to give him a reason to have you make a fucking follow-up appointment and visit and such. Well, you know you're doing something wrong, and you gotta correct yourself and reset your internal clock, get some sleep, get your fiber like he told me to, get your iodine in your diet like he told me to, and to stop sitting on the toilet for so goddamn long. When there's no good reason but to handle your business, five, ten minutes, and then go about your fucking day with the rest of your business. Just like we're gonna carry on with the business because this is the week I get a hemorrhoid, I get told by the ass doctor, Stop sitting on the toilet for so long. And of all things, even more pain in my ass. I'm pained with the labor and task of having to watch Suicide Squad from 2016. The very first one. Not the one coming up next week. Uh, roughly, give or take, August 5th or 6th. I can't remember. With, you know, the whole lineup of John Cena, Idris Elba, Viola Davis, Margot, Margot Robbie, whatever her name is. Hopefully, pray to God, no Jared Leto and or... No hint of Joker involved whatsoever. No Will Smith either. So, you know, that's good or bad. Give or take how you feel by the end of this episode, too. But today we're doing Suicide Squad. 2016's Suicide Squad. The very first one that a lot of people don't care to remember fondly and or like that period. So now they're redoing it again now. Five, and here's another ironic part of life. You know, this is the week I have to review Suicide Squad, the very first one. This is the week I get my first ever in life, and I'm not proud of it. I'm just sharing with you, but not too much TMI, though. My very first hemorrhoid. My very first visit to the ass doctor slash gastroenterologist. No disrespect to anybody out there potentially watching as a gastroenterologist. Shout out to you for actually getting a doctorate in, like, the field of ass study. And also, five years removed. From when this ter thing turns five years old, five years removed, exactly, to the day almost, is when the new, redone, re-edited, we fucked up the first time, we're doing it five years later again to try to get that memory out of your fucking brain. 2021 Suicide Squad version. It's crazy, right? It's crazy how ironic life is. Uh, Xander. Oh man, don't stress about it. Gay dudes deal with this stuff all the time. <laughs> well... 
that's the thing though uh you know I, I don't partake in those activities and no judgment towards anyone that does you know I, i've heard that a lot too and i've heard most likely that um doctors feel uneasy if it's male on male whatever and i would try to look for a female but i'm such a horny boy that maybe i get too attractive in an ass doctor and i just like prolong the finger in my ass whatever for no other excuse than you know i got a pretty lady at the end of me doing something that's not in the front and the back you know i i take what i can get at this point too i'm only getting older and more disheveled but it's all right funny enough now five years removed this is this is so crazy because listen in a week we got five years since 2016 suicide squad came out the very first one that not a lot of people are fond of or people are divided whenever that comes up Five years later, almost again to the day, is when the new revamped, redone version of Suicide Squad is going to release with an even bigger cast, presumably a bigger budget, a lot more going on on screen, and finally an R rating, which I think with a name like Suicide Squad would have merited that the first time around instead of PG-13, which we got here in theaters. Now, on top of that... There's already the rumor that, according to the director of the first one we're reviewing today, Suicide Squad from 2016, David Ayers, Ayers, however you fucking want to butcher that last name like I am right now, no disrespect, sir, but don't have such a confusing fucking name if you're going to be in Hollywood, of all things, or at least make a good enough fucking movie, franchise of movies or whatever, so that we know to say your fucking name without me standing here looking confused and stupid about his ears, 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 whatever, fuck, or ears, pun intended, but of all things, because of the Snyderverse, you know, hashtag release a Snyder cut that we got with fucking Justice League, and we did eventually get like, what was it, like four, four-ish, almost five years after the release of the original Justice League, which everybody cried and bitch about being like really shitty and trashy, which I reviewed, I think maybe 10 episodes ago, something like that too. Justice League and the Snyder Cut, yeah, every reason on the fucking planet to complain about that shit, shout outs to one Izzy underscore IZ for joining the live as well, yeah, rightfully so, but eventually, because people protested enough and Twitter kind of runs the world unofficially now, as far as hashtagging this or that or whatever cause you're behind, it'll probably push through because Twitter said so, we got the Snyder Cut, it was released, it was four hours long. I didn't love it, but it was absolutely better than the original Justice League we got in theaters in 20, I think 16 also, or 2017, whatever it was. But yeah, um, because of that trend now, apparently, according to Twitter at least, David Ayers, Ayers, A-E-I-O-U-ers, whatever, he wants to have his hashtag trend too as well as far as release the Ayers cut of fucking Suicide Squad from 2016 because he wrote apparently a whole letter I think it was on Variety.com or whichever one of those sites they usually publish those like Hollywood blockbuster release things whatever he basically wrote a whole letter while he congratulated James Gunn for his upcoming version and reimagining of Suicide Squad he bitched and moaned and cried about the studio really cupped me they told me I couldn't do this I couldn't do that I couldn't carry out my vision, my idea, my version of Suicide Squad back in 2016. Uh, basically, I was lucky to have the cast of people I got, which it's a decent cast, give or take. I mean, what, the strong, the heavy hitters are what? <clears throat> Excuse me, Jared Leto, Will Smith, Margot Robbie, and Viola Davis. Oh, yeah, and here and there, in between, thrown in the mix, just because they kind of felt bad, Ben Affleck, or Batflick, of course, my favorite Batman. And, uh, he kept saying that stuff like that and outside factors too as well basically contributed to the version of Suicide Squad that no one loves, the critics really didn't love, and even DCU heads whatever really didn't like either. So now he wants that hashtag and I think apparently now people are getting behind it enough as well too to be like release the Ayers cut of the 2016 version of Suicide Squad, which there's so much going on there too, who knows if it's all entirely true or maybe he's like well let me get a chance since Snyder got a chance to re-release the shit even though he might have been apparently sitting on that footage that he threw in to make it four hours long 
this time around when it released a second time, oh, I can do that too, or I can kind of craft something together and make it look like, oh, I had this, you know, stock footage the whole time, but really I'm just reshooting on the low of my own budget and on my own pocket or whatever. I don't know what's really going on there, but it's a ch- I don't like it. I don't enjoy it because it's a cheat code. I, I mean, I get it if a director has a vision of what they want to put on the screen or present to an audience gets kind of muffled or gets kind of like sandbagged, teabagged, cucked, whatever you want to call it, by the studios, the execs and such too, I absolutely understand that happens. I I totally get that part too. But if it's going to be four years, ten years, however many years after the initial release and you want to go back and basically say, oh, you know what, that was really fucked up, the version that came out, but that wasn't the version that was supposed to be seen by you out there. So like you had... Uh, Shadow Serino or my good friend Ryan when we did the episode for um, Godfather 3 they could have left that alone back in 1990 but no they felt the urge the need the necessity or fucking Francis Ford Coppola had to fucking release Coda the death of Michael Corleone 35 years later 30 years later, however long it fucking was because that shit was so garbage and trash. I don't want to remember it finally, even the fucking release date of the original one. I fucked up. Please forgive me. I'm on hands and knees begging and pleading with an open fucking dress shirt on like I was in an R&B video from the 90s. You take me back. Give me another chance and I'll give you the godfather you deserved, which we got, by the way, asshole. The first time and the second time around, we didn't need the third one. It was a cash grab. It was a cash cow. You fucking admitted to it by putting it out there in the first place with all people. Andy Garcia as a fucking nephew for Al Pacino. We're not buying it. We didn't believe it then in 1990. We're not believing it now in 2020, whenever the fuck it came out. And all you fucking did, by the way, Coppola, was add like five minutes to the original film and just shuffle the fucking order of the scenes too as well. So fuck you! Coppola, all right, you gave us a masterpiece with the first one and the second one, Godfather 1, Godfather 2, double, because I'm like one of those, Godfather 2, just like Rocky 2, and just like, I forget what other fucking sequel or movie I like more than the other, I forget right now, but I know definitely Godfather 2 and Rocky 2, those two sequels, unmatched, unparalleled, and outdo the first version or whatever they're fucking sequeling to. But that's my opinion, of course. Mr. Coppola, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I was a little agitated right there. I, forgive me, but Godfather 3 is absolute garbage and trash. Baby Diarrhea as well, too. It, it didn't need to exist. So for the fact that now David Ayers wants to pull a Coppola and say, well, you didn't get the real version I wanted to put out of Suicide Squad back when, and you, you should give me a chance now since you gave Snyder a cut now too, well, then it's a cheat code. Because if a movie does that bad, like even a year later, two years later, what if the fucking whoever was in charge of Black Widow now, which wasn't that great either, it was eh, meh at most, they come back a year or two later, oh, well, you know, I wanted to put it out uh, time frame wise when it was supposed to back in between Civil War and Infinity War, but the studio said I couldn't, and then I put it out after a pandemic so you know you had to be forgiven to me for being confined to those parallels so now it's a year later or two and you know i rethought it in the dream i had the other night a wet dream because of course uh starring scarlett johansson and florence Pugh. oh boy chef's kiss to both of them wah, wah. you know uh, i i revisioned the fucking movie so let me just give it another shot two years later three years later just reshuffle the scenes uh, uh two extra minutes of fucking i don't know scarlett johansson washing the pussy out and then it'll make up for it, a, a box office banger or whatever, too. It's a cheat code. Come on. You got to stick to your guns, James Gunn, pun intended, and stick to the version that you gave us the first time around. Shout out to Kenneth underscore Stones from the Dirty Heels podcast. Shout out to you, brother. Stick to your guns. If you put it out the first time, that's the version we need you to stick to for as long as time progresses. And for as long as the movie exists, your franchise exists, you don't get fucking redos like that. Don't put it out in the first place. Have some integrity if you can. Okay, fuck the budget, fuck the cast, the crew, whatever. People getting employed because this movie's getting made. I get all those factors too as well. But if you really don't feel comfortable with putting that out in the first place, 
listen, don't bother. If you can, don't bother. If we're gonna talk about Sarah Connor, you're asking me, that woman was never good looking. So she had a face made for Judgment Day and uh, heavily judged, as you can tell by the crow's feet and you know wrinkles setting all on her face, of course. Look at fucking Scarlett Johansson, funny enough, now too. This is the other fucking thing I couldn't avoid but help plug this in. Even though this is supposed to be strictly DC Universe, we might as well inject the Marvel part into it too. Scarlett Johansson, just starting fucking Black Widow, finally released after like getting delayed for like a year or two, whatever. Finally out in theaters. And guess what? A week or two removed from it being in fucking theaters and Disney Plus Premier Access. So your Disney Plus subscription plus another $30 to watch it at home. And yeah, the added benefit of watching as many times as you want, but you know, $30 on top of my subscription fee already for a streaming service. Now she's suing Disney. Basically, in a nutshell, if you've been fucking living under a rock, you haven't been paying attention, whatever, I get that. But in a nutshell, the very micro-compressed version of the lawsuit, the premise is, they promised her, we're only gonna release it in theaters. You have to meet certain milestone, meaning numbers as far as sales, kick back whatever too before you see the money we promised you initially so her in her stance in her defense she's saying now well you did the theater release but now you fucking did the premiere plus access shit on disney plus which wasn't originally a deal so instead of meeting my milestones which i maybe could have met without the disney plus option of watching it at home instead of going to the theaters and watch it i'm getting fucked out of like 50 million dollars approximately per se besides uh, the money she got from Disney already for doing the role. Disney comes back saying of all things, which is surprising. Disney never fucking directly, automatically fires back or claps back, Betty had said, when they're confronted with shit like this too. But of all things, I guess they're really triggered by saying, well, you're not being considered Scarlett Johansson already fucking multi-millionaire actress, whatever, for doing it for how long and whatnot. You're not considering the fact that we paid you $20 million already for the role we paid you already for all the times you played Black Widow over the course of 10 years and shit. And now you want to be greedy, knowing there's a pandemic, people are unemployed, people don't have fucking places to live and getting kicked out left and right, where they go, et cetera, et cetera. And you want more money? You greedy bitch, basically, is what, you know, Mickey Mouse told her. So now she's really going in guns blazing, and rightfully so. And people are getting mad because, oh, she's already rich. What does she care about? 20 million, 50 million, whatever, too. It's a contract. She fucking signed out to play the role. They wanted to keep her around for as long as they did. We know her as Black Widow. Once you get the Marvel bag, you're pretty much guaranteed a bag. You're securing a financial fucking future for yourself, a lavish one, for as long as you fucking get to play a character. I mean, look at fucking Captain America. Captain America goes hand in hand with fucking uh, Chris. I forget his name. Chris something, whatever. Chris Evans, I think. Iron Man is Tony Stark's. They can never reintroduce a new Tony Stark's to us ever again because Robert Downey Jr. Oh, what did I just say? Iron Man is Tony Stark's. Duh. <laughs> the made-up character. I mean, Iron Man slash Tony Stark's is Robert Downey Jr. There's no one ever, ever else that'll ever exist in this time or parallel universe, whatever, that can play him. That's not Robert Downey Jr. So you get that shit coming up. And yeah, Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson. I'm a Scarlett Johansson fan, obviously, because I like the way the woman is shaped. I like the way the woman looks. And I love the way she fucking fills out her Black Widow fucking outfit. I don't know why she was in white in the Black Widow fucking movie when the whole time we've seen her, known her, known of her, and she's a fucking assassin, for God's sake. She's in black, type black leather, by the way. They got to play her off in white. Like, oh, she's just misunderstood. The Red Room, they took her fucking reproductive system out so she can never be a mother so she's pure she's a saint she's a virgin basically is she a virgin no hulk was tearing that up but then again you don't want hulk sperm in you too because that's gamma rays that's like imagine that fucking womb if you know the hulk got you pregnant are you gonna make it to month nine no i think you're gonna make it to month one with a big fucking lump in your stomach you ain't gonna like explode uh standing too close on the microwave knowing her ass or his luck and shit too dr banner I think and I strongly believe and I stand behind like it was a hashtag like I was you know uh, I stand for women I stand for whoever the fuck too I, I, I stand besides fucking um, what's her name Scarlett Johansson I mean I like to stand behind her obviously because that's a better view to really appreciate her and her fucking talents per se but I do see where she's coming from 
if you fuck around with the contract and try to be sneaky deaky with it too and say well coming out in theaters only so you make what we promised you and then some kickback percentage whatever oh yeah but the pandemic happened we had to use disney plus we had to create the premiere plus tier access whatever the fuck they call it too 30 more dollars to stay at home and i know the saying that based off reviews it wouldn't have probably done that well either or in theaters had it been theaters alone I think it probably would have done well because there's enough girls that want to do the cosplay of fucking Black Widow, so they need the inspiration to do so. Um, there's a apparently a fan base for that uh, Florence Pugh girl, who honestly my first time seeing her and I like her already, so no complaints there. She's gonna take over the Black Widow mantle, and also, yeah, I mean bitches need fucking ideas for Halloween this year too. Since this is gonna be the first Halloween we're really really back outside like that, if the stupid delta variant don't really take over the world again they need inspiration besides you know the tired and true fucking we're gonna get harley quinn we're gonna get you know whoever else is popular female wise this year of course we're gonna get black widows the white ones the black ones black girls wearing the white version white girls wearing the black version uh some of them are gonna refuse to be a redhead or they're gonna be too cheap to get a wig and shit too to really play the part but what happened there's Black Widow talk, that's MCU talk, that's all that kind of talk to the side now. Now listen, back to the point at hand, Suicide Squad from 2016. Who has been watching, of course? And thanks for joining me. You know, uh, this is again starring Jared Leto, who actually want to touch on now. Because <sighs> I'm sure when he got the news that the Snyderverse is back. I'm sure when he got the fucking add his contribution to the Snyder Cut of Justice League. And did his whole fucking long wooden monologue at the end, uh, at the very end of fucking the, the Snyder Cut version. When he's talking to Batman, talking about having killed Jason Todd, whatever, etc., etc. Don't send them a boy to do a man's job, etc., whatever he did. That was much better than what we got in this version, Suicide Squad, this fucking Joker. Because this Joker was a fucking joke himself, just breathing, just existing, just living. That little bonus segment add-on we got with the Snyder Cut version of Justice League was okay. I didn't like that people really fucking ran off. It was like, Oscar worthy. He's been redeemed. Uh, he got justice for Jared Leto or whatever. No one gives a shit. No one's going to ever outdo Heath Ledger. The closest that came to it, obviously, is 2019's Joker with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. I like that movie a lot. I'll dare say I love it. I, almost nothing wrong with it, even though it kind of glorifies like what a lot of white boys might tend to fucking identify with, you know, hashtag white privilege, of course. But other than that, that's if you're too stupid or had bad parenting to not be able to differentiate. This is a movie about a guy who was deranged, not a fucking manuscript handbook on how to fucking act just because, you know, the cute black girl down the hall didn't fucking like you and you had to imagine and envision a whole relationship in your mind where she's practically dangling, dangling off your balls close to it was definitely Joaquin Phoenix and no disrespect to Jack Nicholson that's iconic in its own way that was old Joker energy from like the comic books a little bit of a throwback I guess to the fucking old TV show which is really trash but he did his own thing with it. It wasn't until so many years later that Heath Ledger did his thing with it too that we've kind of, you know, grown too fond. Where is there ever going to be another Joker besides or outside of Heath Ledger that we can even comprehend existing? Joaquin Phoenix came really close. And I don't think there should be a sequel to Joker because it's all over the place a little bit with the timeline because uh, Joker was so much older than Batman or Bruce Wayne in the fucking movie, of course. Then, if it's not that Joker, then who's the one that fucking goes on to live to be Joker that fucking harasses or has like an unofficial gay romance or tango for life with fucking Batman? I don't understand, but point is, Jared Leto should be in no one's talk as far as the Joker was good in this film. Especially because blank. No, you can say that about Heath Ledger. You can fill in that blank with fucking, um, what's his name? I just said it right now. Jack Nicholson. You can fill that blank in with fucking Mark Hamill, the voice of the fucking Joker character in the games, in the old cartoon show, etc. 
Leave out Jared Leto. Because according to rumors from back when, when they were filming this thing, and I didn't want to believe it to be true, but I already found Jared Leto annoying enough from 2016, a little before that, and period, even up until now especially. He was supposedly doing, like, demented, like, twisted pranks on set so that people would know, hey, I'm really getting into this Joker character because I gotta be deranged and insane and perverted and et cetera, et cetera. Where he was sending, like, I think dead rats and, like, envelopes to, like, everybody on set so everybody got their own dead rat, like, FedEx to them. Even though they were on set, he could just, like, hand deliver it to in the plastic bag, like, here, take this. What's that? Ah, dead rat, whatever. And also, allegedly, supposedly, I don't know, but then again, Jared Leto, uh, 30 Seconds from Mars frontman, who knows, he was sending people used, presumably used, anal beads. I don't know how they know if the anal beads were used or not. Maybe they smelled it. Maybe Margot Robbie was just like, you know, uh, curious enough to like have to like feel the beads and shit if they felt like waxy or like some sort of material was on each one too. Who knows? But supposedly he was doing that kind of shit too. So that leads you to think this guy had nothing, nowhere near close to anything in his life that could parallel mimic and or mirror somebody like the Joker. So that probably explains why we got the shitty Joker that we got with Suicide Squad. I want to get that out the way first. I know I usually leave judgment or how I view things towards the very end with the review. This might be a very short episode because I'm going to be straight up honest. I hated this fucking movie. I was beyond bored. I was bored to tears. I thought I was, but then I woke up from my nap. Two naps I took during the fucking movie because I was bored just by having to fucking subject myself to this again. I remember watching this back in 2016 in theaters with a group of friends who insisted on seeing it because there was nothing else in theaters, I think, or I don't know what the fuck, or they were like enamored, or... No, I think I went with a friend. They had... He had his girlfriend, her sister, and her little sister too, so we were probably babysitting. So it was like, oh, Suicide Squad, Harley Quinn, we're girls, we can identify, even though they look nothing like her. They were like, oh, fine. Big groan, moan, let's go and see it. Two hours later, after I fucking nodded off at least three, four times during the whole fucking thing, I swore to myself, at least I thought I would be able to fucking keep my word and be true to it. I'm never watching this shit again. Jared Leto was fucking useless. As soon as he popped up on screen, I was already <laughs> Z's. That's it. But because I'm curious enough to see and anticipate what comes next week with that new version of Suicide Squad, I have subjected myself to this version of Suicide Squad. Now, did I have to really lead up with it or lead into it with a bunch of Marvel talk or alleged stuff about David Ayers, Ayers, A-E-I-O-U-ers, the director of this version of Suicide Squad that no one fucking likes, that I have to really bring up the fact, and I forgot to, that for some reason in this version of Suicide Squad, he's credited as being in it heavily, but he's really not, which is fucking Scott Eastwood, a.k.a. Clint Eastwood's son, which I remember being able to point out randomly without knowing his name from when he was on Joe Rogan like some months ago. It's like, that is a Clint Eastwood jawline. Then I looked closer, I saw the beady eyes, the kind of like cheekbone structure similar to him too. I was like, oh, that's Clint Eastwood's son I kept hearing about for so long but never fucking saw anything he was in. And then he was in Fast and Furious 9 and shit too. And then now he gets credit as being big in the fucking movie. Meanwhile, I think he gets like two lines. But again, you're in Eastwood. I guess you're fucking good as far as movies are concerned. Roles are concerned and such. Again, I don't know if Scott Eastwood, the name Scott alone, tagged on in front of Eastwood is really a selling point or like sexy as I guess Hollywood asked that the Eastwood name would be because Clint Eastwood, I like that name. I fuck with that name. That's a really Hollywood fucking name. I don't know if he's legit Clint Eastwood. I'm not going to do the Wikipedia search right now to confirm otherwise, but let's just assume he's legit Clint Eastwood. Knowing that, and that I can't top that name, let alone with a Scott in front, I'm going to cheat and go for Clint Eastwood Jr. 
or you know, I don't know, maybe try to be British with it too, since most of these fucking British actors are playing English actors anyway, or American, I mean to say, and go Clint Eastwood the second, or Deuce, whatever. Cheat that way, I don't know. It maybe it maybe would have been more appealing, but I don't know. Scott Eastwood just doesn't have that kind of ring to it, or just kind of like appeal to it per se. But I'm sure he'll be fine regardless because he's an Eastwood. Maybe they'll redo one of his uh, Dirty Harry shits with him starring. Or one of his fucking um, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, something like that, with him starring. Of course, because he's an Eastwood. He's got the jawline, he's got the beady eyes, he's got the hair structure, whatever going on there too. He's, I wouldn't say he's a dead ringer for his dad, but he's very close enough, oddly enough, to his dad to pass. Now, with that being said, very, very, very upset with doing this to myself. I should have known better. I cheated myself. I knew I would. I t you told me you were trouble. And I forget how the rest of the song goes, but rest in peace, late rest in peace to fucking Amy Winehouse. I think 10 years already since she passed, actually. But um, Suicide Squad is just that. And again, like I said earlier, too, the same week that I'm told by the ass doctor proctologist out there for no proctologist or did i go to the gastro or the proctologist i think i went to the gastroenterologist so shout out to all the medical professionals out there watching uh you know no disrespect by saying ass doctor but it just sounds better and more convincing more manly than me saying i went to go get you know fingered by a guy with a thank god rubber glove in his hand to check my anus it sounds a lot better if i say the ass doctor it's cool it might get a chuckle or whatever too it's just like um a little bit more soul bearing than you know confessing to the gastroenterologist but the week that i get detected with of all things me a rather clean guy back there a hemorrhoid first time ever this is the kind of first time ever you're never proud of but first time ever in my life a hemorrhoid he tells me now you need a follow-up visit now you need to eat the fiber diet and stop sitting on the toilet so long idiot you don't need to sit there till your legs are like pins and needles that causes hemorrhoids, but it's like, but doctor, I'm 36, I never had a hemorrhoid in my life ever, and now I fucking get it out of all, out of all fucking weeks, he's like, well, have you had to do any strenuous activities and or labors besides sitting on the toilet for too long, stupid, and I was like, yes, doctor, this week is the week I have to review Suicide Squad from 2016 from my fucking recap review podcast, who has been watching, could that be it, it's like, there you go, you fucking idiot. That's what did it to you. Besides sitting on the toilet too long, of course. That is legit medical advice. He told me, like, don't sit too long on the toilet. You're going to cause these things to you. But also, the added agony, pain, labor, task, fucking discrepancy. That is having to watch Suicide Squad again. And or better yet, said Jared Leto's pathetic as Joker is what might have caused my hemorrhoid. So, that's what it is, alright? Listen, I'm sorry. But, yeah. Oddly enough, all these things are lined up in the same week. Now, the hemorrhoid situation is under control. TMI, I apologize to, but you know, I, I just wanted to put it out there so you know I'm safe. Safe and sound. Uh, yeah, I got the ass doctor scheduled for three weeks just to check up on me. I got to eat a lot of fiber. I got to soften my stool, as I've been told, and not sit on the toilet beyond 10 minutes, even though I got a lot of business done in that time, but, and my time away from my girlfriend, too, because she can get annoying a little bit, even though she's so fucking pretty, but still, you know, you know how it is, you need to get away a little bit, be it the wife, the kids, whoever, your dog, sometimes, too, but then dogs are invasive, they like to push the door open when you're shitting, so, you know, whatever, Suicide Squad, <laughs> I'm really not looking forward to this, I'm being honest. Uh, just like I wasn't looking forward to the ass doctor, the proc I, I want to say gastroenterologist, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't want to go through this, but there are some points to bring up, though. I mean, in the movie, I'll be honest, though, friend. I'll, I'll say this: none of the movie was enjoyable for me. It was really fucking cringe uh, a lot of times, but at least let me back up what I'm expressing as my sentiment towards it right now by what I make notes of and of course what you'll hopefully be able to see as well from my point of view. Will Smith as Deadshot, one of the main guys, if not the main guy besides, you know, co-starring along with Margot Robbie, the main girl, the main gal as Harley Quinn and shit, the Joker's love interest. Will Smith 
cannot come off as threatening or scary or intimidating. And he really doesn't pull it off well here as Deadshot. I usually like Will Smith. I'm like hot and cold towards him. He's done good shit, obviously. That's why he's the Hollywood A-lister he is nowadays, too. I still remember, of course, as a lot of us do fondly, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Still love watching that show whenever it's on. Well, I don't. I haven't watched it in a while, honestly. I think it's on, what is it, on BET Access or something like that, too. So, you know, obviously they're not catering to my fucking viewing audience. But I remember The Fresh Prince when he used to be on Nickelodeon all the time and shit. Uh, but, you know what, ever since he did Ali... And that was like the last, I want to say, great role he played. I haven't been too big a fan of his. Because then there was Bad Boys 2, which was like a lot of loud explosions, a lot of fucking, you know, props and pyros going off. But was there any real substance? No. Bad Boys 1 was a lot better. I didn't get to watch Bad Boys 3, I think. And I didn't watch 4, whichever one it was. I didn't watch anything beyond Bad Boys 2, so I wouldn't know, to be honest. Uh, also, I'm not a fan of Fat Mar Lawrence. I, I like skinny, slimmer, not so heavy in the face fucking Martin Lawrence, like Blue Streak, shit before that, or of course Martin. But anything after that, I'm kind of like, he lost me at some point. I don't know. Oh. Um, the point is, Will Smith can't play anybody threatening and scary convincingly at all. So he's really not doing it. Half the time here, as Deadshot, he's got the mask off, which I thought he would have on most of the time, but he doesn't. And the lines he delivers, same thing that Viola Davis does. The same lines she delivers the whole fucking time is in the stupid, annoying monotone, which she was doing it for the paycheck or something, just like he was probably. There's no emotion behind it. It's dead. It's dry. It's fucking not hitting whatsoever like why did you waste your time playing this role at all did you do it for the paycheck like i just said right now so he's supposed to be this guy that never misses with bullets guns expert in all kinds of fucking weaponry possible thrown at him anything you could point and shoot at he's the fucking guy to go to never ever misses great but he's got these cringe lines they feed him lines to fucking say that he wouldn't fucking come off naturally saying convincingly as well too same thing again with Viola Davis. Whole time, these fucking lines that, who fucking thought of these things? Are they brand new to the English language, writing, grammar whatsoever, or haven't watched the movie Ender Their Life, where they know how people really talk? It's just like wrestling. That's a, a big reason why I stopped watching wrestling altogether. And I haven't watched since WrestleMania. It's way too scripted, and even with the scripted shit, it's shit that would not come naturally out of that person's mouth. Or you can't envision that person saying whatsoever. So just like that, there's this parallel too. The whole fucking movie is full of lines, dialogue, whatever you want to call it. Of shit that doesn't sound natural coming out of anybody's mouth. Or was trying, purposely, pulling, yanking as hard as they could to be quote unquote funny. And that's the biggest fucking thing that I hated right away about this movie. It was a DC Universe version of Guardians of the Galaxy, which I love. And I hate this fucking movie, one of the reasons I do, for just that. They took that fucking same formula that, oddly enough, James Gunn made work for Guardians of the Galaxy. Which, if you really think about it, the cast of characters, their storyline from the comics of back when, probably shouldn't have worked the way it did. But because they got... A great cast, or a good enough cast, however you want to put it to. Everybody there I kind of like, I'm a fan of anyway. Uh, Chris Pine, sorry, Chris Pratt, um, Batista, Zoe Zaldana. Well, Vin Diesel with the easiest fucking job ever on screen is fucking the goddamn tree. And, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, the, the Star is Born, uh, God, I, Bradley Cooper as fucking uh, Rocket Raccoon, or at least the voice of too. Great cast there. Genuinely funny throughout Even the second one I love the second one They fucking just amped it up from the first one But the added touch for me For Guardians of the Galaxy Was that they knew how to use music That Chris Pratt's character Or Star-Lord would have fucking actually listened to In that time frame But they didn't pick immediate hits They didn't pick anything that fucking You you turn on the radio in the car right now And your local fucking uh, Mid-40s you know, uh, conveying to them and shit 
would know from like the 80s and 90s. Not the hits. They picked shit that I'd have to do a little research to find out about. I never heard of, to be honest. And or motherfucking a playlist that they put up on goddamn, thank God for Spotify doing it. The whole fucking playlist of fucking nothing but hits. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, honestly, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is my favorite fucking Marvel movie out of all of them. And I'm not a Marvel fanboy like that. I'm not going to say, oh, Marvel over DC like that automatically just because of Spider-Man or whoever the fuck else. But they got it right. And the second time, too, when they fucking brought in the whole thing with uh, his dad being a fucking god slash planet, whatever, too. It was even funnier. It was even better. It was even longer. But it was just that much better, too. I still put number one as, like, my favorite, though, just because it really introduces to fucking everybody made what shouldn't have worked probably as a group fucking ensemble cast of comic characters work but then you get Suicide Squad which went for that same exact formula just they want to be the cool badass you know we cuss we say ass we say shit you know the girl calls the guys pussies and shit whatever you know we got you know actual crimes we fuck with Batman whatever too as well that's really the vibes you're throwing out there to be honest and the key evident point is the music. Guardians of the Galaxy did it fucking really tastefully. Uh, really well. Again, like I said, most of the songs, you have to wait till the song credits, at least for me, because I'm not that old. Thank God. And you have to go and research them afterwards. The songs they used in comparison in Suicide Squad are songs you know from listening to the Oli station you know, in a car ride with your parents or whatever, or just like shopping at Kmart or Target, whatever. You know these songs, you've heard them way too much, and or they just don't work. Or someone got lazy. Someone got lazy, they said, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy used a whole fucking soundtrack the whole time throughout the whole movie. We can do the same thing too, but let me just uh, check Spotify real quick and see what works from that time in like, I don't know, let's just have one of the interns fucking just randomly pick on shuffle and shit. Because Super Freak don't work. That's been used too many fucking times. That's not applicable to fucking Harley Quinn. It is, but that's too fucking easy of a choice. My five-year-old could fucking pick that shit because they probably heard it enough. With the whole entanglement thing with him and Jada going on too. And then, I don't know how new it is now, but I just stumbled upon some video where Jada was going in in detail about how her and Rest in Peace Tupac were like, quote-unquote, really deep friends. Which would lead you to think, of course, they got to be friends with benefits because Tupac, of course, I get around. Multi-layered, multi-faceted. I forget who fucking said it, but it's a great comparison, you know. Of course, he's like a fucking onion, all these layers upon layers upon layers because he's got... How do you go from Brenda's got a baby to fucking I get around and have it all make sense in the middle, too? He's only human. I get that shit, too. No disrespect there, but no man can be that friendly with a woman... As attractive as uh, Jada Pinkett is, and was back then, still is too, I, I'd give it to her now, and not be fucking, or at least not have those, we're gonna be fucking, those bedroom eye vibes going on between them, to the point where they recap their video showing Will Smith being like, yeah, I know they were really deep friends to the point where if me and Pac were in the same room, I couldn't talk to him, he wouldn't talk to me either, and i just go ahead and let them do their thing. And I never stepped to him, I never confronted him, or at least tried to talk to him like a man would to another man before he passed. So R.I.P. Pac, he passed and shit too. I don't think he ever would have done as a thing too, because now look at the fucking entanglement shit that happened just last year or the year before or whatever with uh, August Alcina of all people too. Tupac I get, because okay, they grew up together, they came up together, and I guess Tupac took her under his wing per se. I know those relationships are possible. But also, if you look like Jada Pinkett Smith, if you got a female near you, next to you, close enough to you that looks like Jada Pinkett, you're going to try to fuck. And that's besides being a good guy, looking out for little sister, or, you know, oh, we grew up together, we know each other deep like that and all that shit too. I'm sorry, at some point you're going to try to fucking get in her pants. And why, why wouldn't you? If you strike out and you're genuinely friends after that too, that's fine too. I can absolutely understand and commend that. But that definitely went on. She saw that was okay with him, and he did nothing about that. So then, of course, she was tempted to do what she did with August Alcina, even if afterwards he was probably told, scolded, listen, 
black men hate black women enough. You better let me have this fucking entanglement and not say shit after we come out public with it and fucking go along and play with it like, yeah, I knew the whole, ha, 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 y'all, I knew the whole time, ha, ha, ha. I'm just a really loving husband. I got nothing better to do but make millions in movies and support my cheating ass wife. Listen, I don't support that at all. I lost what little respect I had for Will Smith when that shit broke. It's not my business. It's not my place to judge, absolutely. But I just can't get with that. I'm of the mindset of if you're married in a relationship, whatever you got going on in your life period with a significant other, if you need to feel, if you feel the need to cheat, cut off everything you got with that person, go ahead, do your thing. If you differ in opinion, if that's how you feel about doing so, oh, it's just sex, it means nothing, whatever, I'm not judging you either. You go ahead and do your thing. But me, I wouldn't do that. Because I saw my mother get cheated on so much by my dad to the point where she was just fucking taking it every time and he'd fucking knew it and rub it in the face, say he was going to see that bitch because there was more than one, bitch one, bitch two, whatever, and just she fucking take it. So I know what that looks like and feels like and I wouldn't fucking dare do it to anybody else. I'd rather just fucking cut everything off, say, I'm gonna fucking be a dog, I'm gonna do my thing out there, so I'd rather not fucking drag you along for the ride and make you miserable. So there's all that too, you know, forgive me for getting a little too personal, I don't mind sharing, That that's beyond me, whatever, I don't care. But I, I just didn't respect it too, so I guess that why that's why that translates into him not being convincing as the good guy, low key, but bad guy overall because he's a hired assassin or trained gun for hire per se, as his dead shot is. Now, that aside, and funny enough too now, this is around a time frame, I think there was another movie, I forget the name of it, where he starred Will Smith alongside Margot Robbie. That's around the time where they alluded to them two getting together and doing their thing way before, or at least a couple of years before the whole August Alcina entanglement shit with Jada Pinkett. People couldn't understand back when why that would happen, but then I guess it made sense after when Jada came out with her thing. So now it makes you think more too, hmm, was that their agreement or did she give Will the fucking free pass that all husbands, boyfriends fucking dream of hearing being told to them one day randomly, hey, you know what, you've been good, you've been loyal for so long, you get a free pass. Go do whatever you gotta do with whoever you choose. Just come back clean and don't give me no diseases, nothing like that. So if he got that free pass or he just did his thing or maybe he manned up at that time and said, you know what, Tupac, August Alcina, the, the guy at fucking Starbucks that's, I can't tell if he's Spanish or black somehow, somewhat. I'm tired of this shit. I got Margot Robbie panting, you know, moaning, groaning for me, at least in the movie. Why not make it happen in real life and clap those cheeks, even though she really doesn't have a lot of ass, but she's really pretty and, man, yeah, she's got some titties. I mean, listen, if you remember Wolf of Wall Street, uh, another great movie I'll eventually review when it comes time, but long as fuck, uh, don't watch the TV version of that. That shit's like five hours long. Um, shout out to Leo DiCaprio. Um, she's a piece of ass there, obviously, and she's a piece of ass, period, even though she doesn't fill out the booty shorts so much for Harley Quinn, which is sad because I think in the comic books they sold too much the image of, you know, Harley being, you know, like they do with all the girls in comics and video games too, tits and ass and face and all this shit too, like impossible to really come up with a craft like that in real life, but goddamn, if she comes close enough and I'll say it, I'm not such a huge fan of white girls, but Margot Robbie is kind of up there for me. I'd say my top 10 of white gals, uh, better yet said. But allegedly, they did their thing during that time frame, uh, Suicide Squad. In that movie, I forget the name of right now, where they were like co-star and they're like con artists or some shit, like um, stealing money from casinos or, or some shit like that. I forget to be honest, but it was a pretty good movie. Just I can't remember the name of it right now. Um... There's a little bit of chemistry going on here in Suicide Squad, where they're like touchy, grabby, feely, like little flirty dialogue, which I don't know if, if it would have happened between both characters, but at least you can see there's a little chemistry there, and maybe a little bit too fucking friendly, for some reason she's sitting on a cop car, 
after she escapes a, a fucking exploding helicopter she's sitting there and she needs assistance getting off the roof of the cop car so of course Deadshot or Will Smith is right there to carry her in his arms to put her down for no reason and by the way they're all wet in the rain too so her makeup smeared she's really hugged up on him when he fucking picks her up and puts her down on the fucking ground again too so maybe in a nutshell all that shit makes sense and or gels together and bottom line is if it's margot robbie listen chef's kiss to her chef's kiss to a lot of fucking all the females almost in every movie i watch but you know i do have standards in my likings but if it's margot robbie come on how you not gonna fucking try to at least shoot your shot as they say especially if you're will smith and you're frustrated you're getting cuckold with this guy that guy whatever you got tupac shadow looming over you the whole time or tupac's dick shadow looming over you the whole time with your badass wife at home too fine as fuck still shout out to jada pinkett for looking good as fuck and, and, and defying gravity and genetics for as old as she's getting she's still thumbs up and all right chef's kiss even though i don't approve of how she acts or how she steps morally per se but still she deserves it i guess at least looks wise if we're just looking outside you know whatever but there's that going on uh, let's see. Margot Robbie is sexy, period. And is very convincing when she's playing Harley Quinn in the very opening and licking on a jail cell bar. It reminds me of, if anyone else remembered, uh, I forget which VMA's Video Music Awards it was from what year. But Sarah Silverman hosted. I like Sarah Silverman. Chef's kiss to her, too. I I've always been a fan of her, especially a young Sarah Silverman. Very stunning, very sharp features on her too. She's Jewish, obviously, but very attracted to her. Always been so. But I loved her, at least as the host of the VMAs that one year. And she made a joke about, I think it was a time when Paris Hilton was in jail for whatever the fuck she did, being too rich and, you know, hot, whatever. <laughs> but um, she made a joke about Paris Hilton wanting the, I think, the jail cell bar she was in to be painted like penises and then proceeded to lick you know pretend lick of course and nothing to really lick on besides a microphone pretending to lick the fucking bars and shit but yeah uh that was a funny joke and i, I don't know why whatever chance i get to bring up sarah silverman i'll do because i still got a crush on her that's my comedic crush for the longest time so shout out to sarah silverman and her podcast too even though to my liking Honestly, I had to kind of bow out and stop listening to her because she got a little bit too, like, liberal, leaning to the left, uh, you know, don't call me a woman, ask me what gender I identify as kind of vibe she's thrown out there. And of all people, from the Sarah Silverman show she had back on Comedy Central, which I loved and I was a big fan of, to now what she's saying on the podcast half the time, it's kind of like, what the fuck happened? But yeah, that's Sarah Silverman talk, but we'll do that on another time and another occasion too. Uh, we talked about the music already. One song I do want to fucking get to that bothered me. I don't remember the name of it, but shout outs to Queens always, Queens, New York specifically, and shout outs most importantly to Action Bronson, who had a song on the soundtrack, which actually also played for one bar in this fucking movie. Uh, for I believe it was the opening montage where they start introducing the character forcibly with fucking Viola Davis doing a voiceover with her fucking dead dead fish delivery fucking boring as fuck obviously making it about well I'm just here for the paycheck I'm gonna read my lines and be as non-descriptive as possible with all these characters and shit too as she's describing Deadshot Deadshot right I almost said Deadpool Deadshot there's an Action Bronson song playing which was not the best choice for action bronson i think he might have made it for the soundtrack exclusively but it's a poor use and i'm so sad to see that more um uh, dc used action bronson's in that sense not his best cut or and or pick unlike the black widow episode if you remember sean paul of all people sean paul and uh oh god what's her name um sia s-i-a sia that singer I forget the name of the song already because I'm getting that old, I guess. But that catchy ass song they had together, that made it to the Marvel Universe in Black Widow of all films. The 
what's going to be apparently the lowest grossing of all the Marvel films. But now they're in the fucking Marvel Universe. Action Bronson's stuck in the fucking DC Universe with one song he's probably not proud of and barely one line of it on top of fucking Dead Shots montage, which was all right, but it really didn't do any justice to Will Smith and or the character. There's that. Uh, Again, like I mentioned earlier, they used Super Freak to introduce fucking Harley Quinn. I mean, listen. It's an easy choice. Yeah, you could say she's a super freak, though. She's an evil super freak. Yeah, but it's too easy of a fucking choice. If you still listen to the radio, if you got Sirius XM, if you got Spotify, whatever fucking playlist anybody can fucking slap together for a fucking lazy ass movie music uh, connoisseur that they fucking assigned for Suicide Squad, anybody could fucking pick goddamn super freak. Rest in peace, Rick James, of course. My. If you got kids, they know Super Freak some way, somehow from probably one of the kids shows they got today. Because they fucking redid a version of that shit for whatever puppet or cartoon they're watching on the phone all day. Too easy of a choice. And again, like I said earlier, that's one of my main complaints with the music. Is like, yeah, they try to go for the retro throwback tracks like fucking Guardians of the Galaxy did so excellently. But they got lazy with it and said, let's just pick some fucking hits. Whatever makes sense. No real time frame or no consistency with it. So... Yeah, it worked for Guardians. Why can't it work for us? And of course, Super Freak for her. And let's leave it at that. Nope, that's fucking lazy. I'm sorry. Speaking of fucking lazy use of that shit too, the same applies to unfortunately ACDC with their fucking shit. Excuse me, their their fucking shit, Dirty Deeds, which I love and I love ACDC, especially the old shit. But the use of all things for fucking I don't even I didn't even catch his name to be honest. The fucking Boomerang guy or Captain Boomerang was his fucking name. The Australian guy with the really annoying accent. And thank God he had close to no fucking lines anyway, too. Besides grunts and like, yeah, let's fucking commit some crimes, pal or mate or whatever he calls people and shit. Also, going back to uh, Margot Robbie and or Harley Quinn. We get introduced to Jared Leto's bum ass, stank ass, cheap ass, imitation crab meat ass joker here in the club scene. The guy, the hoodlum they're talking with is fucking common of all people. They fucking just tattered, I'm going to hope, like, pretend tattooed his head. Even though I've seen common recently, he's got nothing on his head besides baldness, like me, of course, too. But common's the bad guy. He puts on an even heavier Chicago accent than what he has regularly as per normal common as we fucking heard him rap and act and sing and shit, too. It's like, nah, man, that's your chick, Joker. That's your bitch, she a bad one, or whatever. Like, he, he sounded like he had, like, the flu or, like, a really bad chest cold going on. It was no need for Common to degrade himself to be in the DC universe of all things, too. Uh, there's that shit going on as well. El Diablo's introduced, and it's like, well, you know, at this point, I'm like, is there really anything for me in this film? Because El Diablo's an emo. We find out much later on he fucking burned his family alive, his wife and kids, by mistake because he's a fucking hothead, literally. He gets upset over the stupidest shit. He got so upset at his fucking wife finding his dirty money and his stash of drugs somewhere in the fucking house. She's like, this shit again, you fucking asshole, how could you? Not in this house with the kids around. And she's like, and he's like, Take that shit and put it back where you found it, bitch. That's not yours to fucking look at or touch. And she's telling him basically, okay, that's it. I'm taking the kids. I'm going to my mom's house. We're leaving you. He gets fucking hot and mad about that shit. Like, you bitch, you can't fucking say that to me. What do you think you're doing? And next thing you know, because he forgets, of course, apparently because he got so mad, he's got the power of fucking fire, or he's practically a fucking devil underneath human skin. He burns her ass alive. He burns his children's ass alive. They're dead, and it's all his fault. So now he's guilty. Now he's remorseful. Oh, oh man, I burned my wife and my kids, bro. Oh, uh, you must have left the stove on by mistake, by accident, whatever that happens. It's okay, bro. No, man, I got this firepower, bro. I fucking burn them. They got me mad. This bitch said don't have drugs in the house or whatever. And some other bullshit. It's it just... The premise is so stupid. I'm sorry for Diablo. He's a fucking emo 
underneath it all, so it's like, it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, Viola Davis, again, like I said, it's just like, she's so cringe throughout this thing. She's a great actress, otherwise she gets, deserves all the credit she's gotten for everything else she's done except this role. It's so phoned in, it's so lazy. They must have fucking woken her up from a really nice afternoon nap to film all her parts because she reads like she's ready to snore at the end of every fucking sentence after hitting every fucking period. It's embarrassing. And, oh, I didn't get to the worst intro either. Is fucking Killer Croc. I got so many problems with Killer Croc because, like I said, I believe, yeah, it might have been the Black Widow episode. Same complaint. And it's not like I'm praising Marvel again. The same complaint, though. Is that Taskmaster. Okay. She was a female underneath the fucking costume. No problems with that. But I do have a problem with their under usage of and poor overall usage of Taskmaster. But at least they could have got the costume right. Bulk it up. Put some padding muscle on it too and shit. Make it look convincing. Cool. Movie like whatever. They could have done the same thing here with Killer Croc because I never thought I'd ever see my fucking like... I've seen albino crocodiles and or alligators or whatever. I think alligators got the biggest snout. But I've seen those. But I never ever thought I'd see in my life a fucking dying of hunger, starving to death almost, emaciated fucking crocodile like Killer Croc is. Big fucking square head looking like King Cooper or Bowser from the original Super Mario Brothers movie. That's the only thing they got like lizard, alligator, crocodile-like. But then the rest of the body, he's scrawny as fuck. He's just really scaly. He's like a really ashy fucking guy that came out the fucking pool of anything. It looks pathetic. It doesn't look convincing at all. They could have put stilts on him. They could have invested some more money or budget into the fucking costume. Again, padding, filling, feathers, whatever the fuck they had to do like they did with the fucking Ninja Turtles back in their movies in the 90s. They made them look real enough, but oh, oddly enough they couldn't do it again in 2014 16, whatever it was when they redid the Turtles with fucking Michael Bay at the helm and recrafting the story too as well with that debacle. So they really couldn't have fucking done that here with Killer Croc? Who's a fucking lazy asshole that said, you know what, we're not even going to bother with this guy. I, who cares, he's an overgrown crocodile that kills guys by eating them alive. At least make him look like a half man, half crocodile with a build. You give him that gravelly ass, fucking thick convict ass voice to, to make him look like he's uh, dying from Ebola virus or something. Or like he got, he's been born with diarrhea from the womb and shit so he can never put on weight. And anything he does, he runs right through him like fucking bird shit. It's pathetic. There's that shit too. Oh, God. Um, another waste of a fucking really good song, at least one I like a lot, is Shouts to Kanye. Hopefully, he's telling the truth and he'll be able to drop fucking Danda, which he promised now on August 5th or 6th, whatever. Oddly enough, the same day as a new Suicide Squad coming out. So hopefully, we'll have that review ready as well to do. Shout out to Kanye. They use Black Skinhead from the Yeezus album, which I like the album overall. It was cool, but I really like that track a lot. I use that to work out sometimes. Cool, Marilyn Manson, um, the beautiful people sounding like vibes. But of course, they wasted. Black Skinhead on the course, which might be kind of racist, uh, on Deadshot. His montage of when he gets freed, you know, uh, freed from jail. Hey, show me what you could fucking do with some guns, which we just laid out in front of you, like 50 of them. Take your pick and fucking go crazy. Of course, they waste the whole song with him just fucking showing off his skills. It's already dead shot. He's got the stupid mask on with the fucking laser eye intact. So, of course, he's not going to miss one shot. He really has to prove it to you. Of course, white men making the black man prove himself again, even though he's already been proven to be the expert. Number one, numero uno. And what the fuck they're hiring him to do. But of course, white privilege hashtag, don't forget that. It's always oppressing us. But for God's sakes, there's that shit. Oh man, Joker again. This is when he delivers a stupid ass fucking line from the trailer. Doesn't hit any more differently or more convincingly in the fucking movie here too. All oh, that chit chat is gonna get you hurt. The fucking scare guy. I mean, listen, if anyone as ghostly, as pastely looking, as cuck looking, as this Joker 
was send that to me ever in life, I would think they're gay. That's the vibes I got from this joke, at least. Harley is a fucking good beard and or front, but otherwise we probably got a gay joker, if anything. <laughs> or at least one that worries too much about the looks and the fashions more than fucking the crimes. Or being a fucking convincing clown prince of crime. Or a killer, better yet said. But yeah, he's got that shit going on. Then there's a fucking gathering on the mines where his henchmen are telling him, hey, they captured Harley Quinn, we need to go get her back. It's like, all right, get the chopper or whatever the fuck he said. As he lays back in that even more stupid cuck loser trying too hard to be cool with the cool kids at the lunch table, falling back into a conveniently fucking layered out circle of fucking knives around him, looking like a halo of knives and shit. And his pathetic, shitty... No one fucking better tell me that was a good joke, a laugh, laugh, ah, 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 whatever the fuck you got going on. Sound like an old Romanian grandfather of that laugh. But there's that shit going on, ineffective, trying too fucking hard overall. <sighs> then we move on to Enchantress. She's, uh, her brother actually is the bad guy who comes to life. He finds her fucking sacred heart, steals it from Viola Davis, that's the secret of the fucking power, they're channeling each other, apparently they're so close and fond of each other that he needs her heart to fucking function properly, and he's so overpowered, demigod almost, that like any other fucking villain, almost any other movie, when like they over explain their plans, or they talk too fucking much before delivering the death blow, or final move, whatever, and purposely giving the good guys in this guy, in this case, the chance to fucking elaborate, plan, work together to fucking bring them down too. It's just another case of that shit. It's a waste of a fucking villain. I didn't even bother to get the name of this shit. I was already bored to tears almost in this fucking part here. Uh, uh, let's see what else is going on here. Another waste of this a fucking great song, which I loved from my youth. I'm not that young, but still young enough to appreciate the song when it came out because MTV was still a thing. They used to play fucking videos most of the day on TV, at least. Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. I like the old uh, White Stripes shit, especially the first and second album. This is from the second album, I believe, the lead single from Seven Nation Army. Doom, 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 and all that shit. Wasted a course on the bum ass Suicide Squad because, oh, it's old enough to use and consider a throwback because we're trying to do the same thing that Guardians of the Galaxy did with the fucking music and playing randomly in some scenes when it just gels and works together. Nope! Big fucking fail. Because it's too good of a song to waste on this cast of characters where they randomly throw in a fucking Indian guy that has like a grappling gun as his power. I'm not even sure who he was, what his name is and shit. They drag him out of a fucking vehicle. Of course, he punches out the female cop for no good reason because he's sexist. Um, gathering everybody together in the fucking jail yard too. Trying to build them up as these fucking cool badasses, misunderstood. Give them a second chance. They're going to do good just because they got a bomb implanted in their fucking neck. Otherwise, they'd be bad and killing and all this shit besides acting in a bad movie and shit. <sighs> Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie, not a bad actress. I like her actually besides the looks, but the shit is so cringe. She says here from this point onwards, these one-liners she's trying to hit, like she's in Guardians of the Galaxy, a movie that's actually funny and charming and full of action and cleverly fucking witty as hell. No, she's trying to go for the same vibes here with Harley Quinn. Instead of fucking trying to craft something that might be more up her alley, they try to make it funny. They try to make a fucking witty, one-linery, whatever. Doesn't work. And from this point on, with, with her character, it's like heavy on it. Like they just fucking pushed down on the gas and said, let's go with it. Uh, Then, if it wasn't bad enough to use an actual good song, Seven Nation Army from fucking White Stripes, they go into a... Why would you ever incorporate this in a movie unless it's about pot, weed, and not starring Seth Rogen, Eminem without me? Of course, they throw it in there to be funny, quirky, whatever, this, that, the other. 
It's another fucking hit and miss. My God, they struck out already, but at this point, they should be fucking fired from the team, dropped from the whole fucking lineup altogether. But yeah, the one highlight, finally, a, a, a good fucking part of the movie, actually comes when they introduce Katana, which is supposedly working with the good guys, the hired army to fucking protect uh, the city and or work with the Suicide Squad. In this case, Katana has the coolest intro out of all of them. Because no words are spoken. They let the action tell the fucking story. The army guy, lead guy, whatever, only chimes in with her sword. Possesses the soul of a husband. Whoever she kills with that sword, she takes the soul, basically. And does not honor of her husband, etc., etc. It's very brief. It's very minimal. It's to the fucking point. At least with Katana, they got that shit right. But then, of course, there's still the rest of the movie to watch. Oh, God. The Indian guy, like I mentioned before, with the ponytail, I think he's Spanish in real life, gets killed off right away because he tried to escape with his slow-ass grappling gun, shoots one line, zip, like a fucking, instead of moving fast with the grappling gun, he's moving like he's on a goddamn escalator target, waiting to get up to the third floor, and of course they kill him, so they let off the bomb in his neck, he's gone, I don't even know his fucking name, so I don't bother at this point either. They start confronting the first batch of, like, possessed individuals, aliens, blackberry-headed motherfuckers, too, that are getting possessed by the witch, Enchantress, who's the bad girl now in this fucking thing, but she's been sleeping with the lead army guy, so that's his whole MO for saving hers to get the, the, the regular girl behind the witch and all that, too. Deadshot, of course, conveniently enough, has bullets that can kill aliens, possessed beings, um, interdimensional fucking... Interstellar bodies and shit too So of course Bing 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 Headshot 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 He'd be owning fucking Call of Duty uh, Finally we get to See motherfucking El Diablo Emo Diablo Show off his talents His fucking skills And or his fucking superpowers I guess Because he's a metahuman With the fire and shit when they make it to the second level up, they're fucking surrounded by all these fucking blackberry-headed individuals, too, and they can't get away. Finally, because he gets bullied. So this might trigger you if you haven't seen this ever in your life, and I strongly suggest you don't. But if you ever do subject yourself to watching this because you get curious enough after The Suicide Squad, which comes out afterwards, too, five years after this piece of shit came out. If you ever get curious enough and you're triggered by bullying, I forewarn you at this part here, too, is that Will Smith Deadshot bullies... Has to fucking literally tap on his bald head, push him around, El Diablo, to get him to fucking shoot out his firepowers and be of finally good use in this film. I mean, the special effects on the fire is pretty cool. And then again, if you got a budget to fuck around with and hopefully some time to make what you would hope would end up being a decent movie, you're going to work on the fire looking realistic enough. So yeah, finally shows off his power, finally saves the day, helps him out a lot too. Uh, there's a flashback to Harley Quinn jumping into the open tank vat of chemicals like she does in the comics for the Joker because he wants to, she wants to be with him. He, she wants to be his girl, prove that she's trustworthy, loyal to him too. So I don't remember in the comics if it went like it did in the movie. She jumps in, she's fucking converting into whatever the Joker converted into and then he, in the movie at least, jumps in right after her to show his love and be like, oh, baby cakes, whatever, and start making out in the fucking chemical pool, whatever. I don't think he did that in the comics. And this also shows that they really tried to fucking show a toxic love affair, if anything, or relationship between Joker and Harley. But at the end of the day, oh, he loves her. He went to go... Bust her out of jail. He went to go fucking save her with the helicopter and shit like he does later on too. No. They was already toxic enough because in the comics and every other fucking embodiment of the Joker. He beats Harley. He diminishes Harley. He leaves her for dead half the fucking time anyway. In the, in the fucking excellent Harley Quinn animated series on HBO Max... That's the best version of Joker, too, because one of the best of them, too, because it's honest. He don't give a shit about fucking Harley Quinn. 
but they made it seem like deep down underneath it all because he's toxic and she's toxic and then they're literally composed of toxic because they found the toxic he loves her at the end of the day no he fucking doesn't he's abusive as fuck towards her and i'm glad i think they brought that up when the movie came out too as well like of course women were triggered by it too as well and they brought up no joker's abusive because he does that now Obviously, they didn't read the fucking comics or see any of the past material where he was absolutely toxic, damn near criminal towards Harley. But I digress. Again, another reason why this version of Joker, Jared Leto, his version of Joker sucks ass. Oh, boy. Uh, Honestly, there's so much shit that goes on here now. It's here, it's there, hit and miss, whatever. I fell asleep. So then I had to fucking pause the shit when I woke up and I was upset at myself that I was watching the whole thing Suicide Squad from 2016. Woke up, I had to fucking rewind to the part where she's at the stairs to see, oh yeah, uh, the helicopter crashes with him in it after he tried to save her and Deadshot was told by fucking Viola Davis, take that fucking shot to kill her ass because she's trying to get away or I'll kill your ass and you'll never see your daughter again, ha ha ha, whatever. He purposely misses a shot, he don't fucking hit her. She gets away, presumably, but then their helicopter shot down with Joker in it, and then she's all sad and morbid, thinking, oh my god, my Putin's dead, Joker's dead, whatever. As we move on, they fucking find out because Deadshot's like a really low-key good guy, besides being a hired gun hitman for hire, finds a file showing that the military guy is really, or really was, smashing the goddamn witch, Blowing her back out. That's why he wants to save her. That's why he wants to save the city and all that shit too. It's so long and convoluted. I didn't give a shit at this point anymore. I, I just remembered every time. Like I didn't fucking like this in the theaters. I remember falling asleep there too. I'm falling asleep again now too as well. And it's like god damn it. Why am I doing this shit to myself to be honest. So if you fast forward a little bit too. It's like god damn it. I, they start finding the bad guy at the fucking middle of the city because it's always in the heart of the city that they gotta fucking fight the evildoers, the, the fucking demon, metahuman, whatever the fuck to as well. They gang up, the power of fucking teamwork, friendship, getting together too. El Diablo sacrifices himself by finally uses his full potential with the firepower, turn into a skull demon covered in flames and shit to kill the bad guy he just dies he, he sacrifices himself he just dies there's no mention of him afterwards too when he fucking evaporates or dissipates his fire does and shit too at the end of the movie there's no tombstone no in memory of there's no flashback to when he was alive or like yeah you know i kind of missed that el diablo guy or whatever no mention of him so maybe for the better because he did kill his wife and kids so it's like uh chris benoit almost like he's never ever mentioned wrestling as great as a in-ring worker that he was never ever brought up again it's kind of taboo to do so maybe that's what they're kind of doing with the uh diablo here as well they just never mention him again because he did the boo-boo no 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 thing as he shouldn't have uh yeah that's you know what Let's end it here, because to be honest, as I bear my soul with you practically in every episode I do, every review I put up to as well, and like I do in general and period in my life, I'm an open book, there's no fucking hiding. Listen, I fucking told you to open up this episode that the same week I have to review this pain in the ass film, Suicide Squad from 2016, is the same week I get my first ever hemorrhoid in my ass. Oddly enough, with the first time ever, I have to go to the proctologist or the ass doctor in simpler terms because I'm not sure if it was the proctologist or the gastroenterologist. So I don't want to disrespect the medical doctor community by mislabeling the doctor I went to. I'm pretty sure it was gastro. So let's just leave it at the ass doctor. First time ever for that kind of visit. First time ever I get a hemorrhoid again. First time ever I fucking put myself through another piece of shit miserable film like Suicide Squad from 2016. It's ironic enough. This film's a pain in the ass. I got something that developed and grew and is now becoming literally a pain in my ass, a hemorrhoid. And now I gotta put ointment in my ass. I gotta fucking craft a diet now full of fiber that's gonna help push 
more shit out of my ass and now I had to get scolded by the doctor as I did and get told you dumb fuck stop sitting on the toilet so much because that is also a leading cause and contributing factor to people getting hemorrhoids in their ass so you never have to come see me again but because I'm a doctor and I need to get your copay I need your fucking deductible money and such too I'm scheduling you for three weeks from now after you do the fiber intensive diet after you start rubbing and fingering your ass with ointment too to come back and see me just so I can tell you nothing to worry about it's gone you took care of it yourself with the ointment and the diet I just need some more money to fucking pocket for you know the fact that I'm an ass doctor I'm probing people all day so if anything I can relate closest to the aliens when they touch down on earth and take over and shit if the robot war doesn't pop off first but that's proctology, gastroenterology talk, perhaps, hemorrhoid talk, and all that. Like I said, I like to be honest and upfront with people here, too, as well. So I like to use my platform for good. Unlike Suicide Squad 2016, which I cannot describe in any way, shape, or form that might be deemed as good and or enjoyable. For this one, I will not give it one or two, fuck no, you're crazy. Not even half an ear. To be honest, and because I gotta incorporate my props, I am my own props department, editing, production, staff, host, all that, etc. I can't give it anything but no ears. If I could castrate, chop off these fucking ears, if I didn't think this hat was so cool, I would fucking do it live right now on Instagram at who this is one and or will you see it afterwards on YouTube, youtube.com backslash who this is one and or the audio version as I get descriptive and how I hack off my fucking ears at the watching this shit. Just so you can see and hear how descriptive I am, my agony, my pain, my displeasure, the fact that I had to fucking watch this shit again for the sake of just reviewing it. First time ever I get a hemorrhoid. First time ever I got to see the proctologist, gastroenterologist, ass doctor. First time in a long time I fucking hated myself for seeing a fucking movie like this, which is also metaphorically pinning my ass. This is the first time ever I got to give a movie zero out of zero ears. No ears whatsoever. No, actually, fuck the hat right now. I can't even fucking justify having watched this shit, putting myself through it. Or ever doing it again. This shit is a big fat fucking stinker. Goose egg. Hockey puck. Uh, you know, uh, what is it the girls use to protect themselves at any condom? The uh, diaphragm. Whatever fucking circular object you got nearby you. Or, you know, I'm going to fucking indulge in a, in a few in a Popeye's chicken sandwich. Spicy, of course. Which actually I shouldn't be doing because, oh, god damn it. I got a hemorrhoid. I can't eat it. It's spicy. Well, I'll sacrifice... Through the pain and agony of spiciness hitting the hemorrhoid. Because I totally forgot I shouldn't be having spicy shit right now. But whatever circular object you can use to describe a zero. Or nothing of value. Or nothing but a fucking empty void as I'm doing right now in my face. And my fingers going in my eye. That's the best way to describe Suicide Squad from 2016. Zero. Trash. Basura. Not worth your time. Do not pay to rent this shit. If you have Hulu already. It's in there. Uh, watch it there if you feel like watching it. This movie is worth no one's time. So David Ayers, Ayers, A-E-I-O-U-ers, however you fucking want me to butcher or pronounce your last name, listen, I'm sure you got better things to do in life than to fucking cry and bitch and moan on Twitter about how you want your version, the version you wanted to give to the world of Suicide Squad, a chance five years later. No, it's too late for you. Go fuck yourself as far as Suicide Squad is concerned. Go fucking take whatever time you have left in your life. Write another kind of movie. Make something else. Don't do this ever again to yourself. Don't fuck with us and say you got extra bonus footage of Suicide Squad. The first one laying around, you're going to fucking shuffle it around Edit, trim, more joke, or less joke, or whatever. We don't need more of this whatsoever at all. We don't. It's enough already. I beg of you, please, 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 sir. I'm trying to be polite here. And I'm not trying to disrespect you, but I am disrespecting your product, which you were at the head of, Suicide Squad from 2016. Leave this shit alone. 
Just let it die. Just like that fucking house plant. Everybody's guilty of having one that they fucking neglect, not willingly. But once they remember and look at it, it's like a big yellow stem of fucking death staring back at them. It's like, oh yeah, I was supposed to water that. Do the same thing with Suicide Squad 2016. Leave it alone. It's not bothering anybody right now because no one's enjoying it anyway. So we know to leave it alone and let it die slow. I, I would think Batman would at least eat a pussy for like... You know, he's probably mathematically deduced it in his head, so he's like, hmm, if I do seven to ten minutes approximately of uh, Kungalingus on Selena, whatever the fucking name is, you know, aka Catwoman, that might subdue her enough for the time being at five, ten minutes of uh, wet pussy juice uh, dripping down the side of her thighs, I might be able to get away and, you know, go back to the back cave, whatever the fuck too, and then she might just give up for that night at least, robbing the bank. Or robbing a jewelry store or something. And maybe she'll leave it for tomorrow. She'll be so worn out from fucking her thighs trembling as my tongue blah, 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 goes back and forth like a goddamn uh, chameleon iguana. Lizard of choice, whatever name insert here, whatever, too. I don't know. But, and, and also Batman doesn't have a beard. He's got like a very rugged, defined, chiseled jawline. So, does the chin help when eating pussy? 